Hello and welcome to the second part of this free trial uh, of the Airbnb Mastery Academy. The things that we're going to cover, understanding your setup costs, understanding how to speak to agents and landlords, and also is going to be understanding how to stack your deal uh, from a numbers standpoint in a very basic sense. And this is just going to be really, really key things uh, that is going to be important to building your Airbnb business. If you don't know how to talk to agents and landlords, if you don't know how to estimate setup costs, or stack the numbers on your deal, it's going to be very, very hard to build a profitable business. Well, the first part is going to be all about speaking to agents and landlords. And something that I see a lot of people make is that they don't qualify before they pitch the landlord. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, if you're just ringing up agents and you're just talking about how you want to get a deal, you want to get a company let agreement, uh, why don't you do company let agreements? All you're doing is come across as looking very unprofessional and you're pitching someone that is never going to be uh, open to a company let agreement. So instead, focus on asking questions first. So ask them, you know, are they open to a company let agreement? Do they have experience when it comes to company let agreements? Um, and is it something that they are open to trying if they've not tried it before? If they're saying no to all of these questions, then there's no point trying to pitch to them. Then they're never going to be convinced over the phone. So you're looking at just moving on. And this also ties in quite well to how frequency is key when it comes to this. You know, a lot of people that they give up too easily. You know, they make five, ten, twenty phone calls, and then they give up and they think that the, the, the market's dead. Uh, everyone's been pitched to, and it doesn't work. The facts are, you need to make 100, 200, 300 phone calls to different agents and landlords because you're not going to be super slick um, when you make your first call. But after three hundred phone calls, you will be better. Um, and you will be better at speaking to agents, you will be better at speaking to landlords. I've never met somebody that's made 200, 300 phone calls to different agents and landlords and never got a deal. Something I always say when people talk to me is they say, I'm struggling to get deals, what can I do, what can I say? And I say, have you contacted 200 agents yet? And they always say no. And I say, when you contacted 200 agents, get back to me. And no one has ever got back to me and said that they've contacted that. Why? Either probably because they gave up or they got a deal before they got one. So this is something that's really, really important is to, to remain patient and to remain focused and, and, and focus on qualifying people before you pitch in. Um, this is going to really make you come across as professional and stand you out from the crowd. Um, so now we're going to go into stacking the deal. Now in the Excite the Academy, we cover this in a much broader spectrum. Really sort of deep dive into what our potential USPs could be or what our rents need to be in order to stand out. We're going to cover all that inside the Academy as well as having access to myself personally. Um, and to all the trainers to make sure that you're making the right and informed decisions. But as part of this trial, something I'm just going to cover is using big data to get an understanding of an area and understanding what our rates could be. So, three, four tools that we're going to need um, is AirDNA's um, sort of big data um, calculator, uh, Airbnb's big data calculator, Price Labs calculator, and your deal analyzer. This is something that's included with the trial, um, so I would open that up now. Um, so you can get an idea um, of what your rates could be and estimating the costs. So, something we're going to do now uh, is go into Airbnb's calculator. So we're going to cover the area of Manchester because it's here and I've got a two-bedroom property. Uh, and as you can see, over a seven-night uh, sort of rate, you're looking at around £119 per night. That is something that Airbnb is saying that you could get. And that's based on, obviously, the data that it has. Now... Something that we're going to do is we can't just rely on one piece of information. We have to gather the data as a whole from as many sources as possible and then get an average. So that brings us on to AirDNA. What are they saying about this potential area that we're going to invest in? It's saying that the revenue is around 38,000, occupancy is around 56%. This ties in um, with what we were saying earlier when it comes to analysing the area, so it makes sense for them to say that information again. And then we've got the net operating at around 28,400. Um, this, is, this is like our important information because operating expenses is really the OTA fees when it comes to the property and really we're only going to see um, these fees. This is what we have to run our business off. And it's saying we've got an average nightly rate of £186. So now we're going to go into Price Labs. This is something that is um, probably one of the most important ones. And again, I've already filled this information out, but it's saying here around 52% occupancy, similar to what AirDNA was saying. And then we've got £132 in the 25th percentile and it goes all the way up to £200 at the top 25%. And that's averaged over 258 listings. Now, 
This is why averages are quite important. All of these different pieces of software have given you different information. So now we're going to take an average. So I think it's fair to say that on the low end, we would be making around £130 per night. Uh, it might go as low as 120 somewhere between 120 and maybe up to £200 per night. And again, this is something that's quite important because you could have a lower rate uh, and make more occupancy. But something that I think is very important is to not do that and instead focus on having a unique property and then increasing your occupancy rates whilst keeping the prices the same. This is how we're going to remain competitive inside of this marketplace is creating a USP. And this is something that we teach inside of the academy. So something I'm going to do now is use the analyzer. And I think it's fair to say that we could get around £120 uh, in the week because that was the lowest thing that we was getting estimated. And it was saying up to £200, but if we said £150 to try and be conservative, um, I think that's a fair estimate. I think everyone would agree that that is well uh, likely based on the information we've got uh, to get that sort of deal. And again, I've just made up some costs here um, of, a, say, a potential two-bedroom property with management included at 15% here. Now we can see that we're looking at around between 200 and maybe 900 pounds per night. And this is where it's really important because again, remember these um, big data were focusing on getting a 50% occupancy, which is where you would be looking at around the 200 pound mark, 200, 230 pounds per mark. But if I'm focusing on creating a USP, having a unique property, uh, and getting a higher occupancy through that model, you can see it pushes us up to 900 or up to a thousand pounds maybe per night, um, sorry, per month, um, which is really going to help make you stand out, be unique, and build your business uh, in the proper way. And this is something that, we're, again, we teach inside of the academy. Something I would now do um, is we'll do a deep dive and understanding the certain areas, but I'm going to leave it at that. Something that's going to be really important now is to understand your setup costs. You know, we, we've estimated how much we should make, we know how to find the right areas, we know how to speak to agents and landlords, and, but we need to be able to understand how much is this deal gonna cost in order to set up. And that's something I'm gonna cover uh, in the next step. So now I'm gonna sort of briefly go over this. Um, it's something we cover in a lot more detail inside of the academy, but I want to give people an idea of, you know, how much would it cost to set up a sort of deal? Because uh, I see a lot of people rely a lot on sources, um, to get with their set of costs out, and a lot of time sources are very, very wrong with these sorts of things. And same with stack, stacking the deal when it comes to the earlier um, segment, and even understanding areas. A lot of deals are not very good at this. Um, so it's something that I think is important to cover. Um, some things that you are going to need is you're going to need the deal analyzer. Um, understanding uh, we have a setup cost part of this. I'm going to assume a few things. One is going to be the deposit. So I'm going to assume that there's going to be one month rent at £1,200 and one month deposit up front. Uh, I'm going to assume they want these sorts of things. So I'm going to put this in now. Bedding. I'm going to assume, um, and it's something I recommend people do, is get linen hire through your cleaners um, for bedding because then they're just dealing with it. You pay a bit more on the cleaning fees, but it's going to make your business a lot more systemized, which is going to be very important when it comes to scaling. Um, so, and then I'm assuming photography at £250. This is quite sort of a standard price when it comes to this. And you see we're looking at around £2,650 um, at the start. Now, when we go into estimating furniture, I'd recommend people use this company. It's called Sublime Furnishings. It's where I get all my furniture from. Um, and the first thing we're going to look at is sofa beds. I'd recommend everyone get sofa beds. It just helps increase your guest capacity um, and makes you a little bit more unique. So I recommend people get them. So I'm going to add that to cart. I wouldn't recommend anyone gets like dining table and chairs. You can get that from places like Argos and soft furniture you can get from places like Dunham. I'm not going to cover this again in the video. We cover it in the academy um, and I hope you through this process. But for the sake of this and to keep it easy, I'm just going to cover um, using sublime furnishings. I recommend people try and use Divion beds. The only time really you wouldn't be able to use Divion beds is if it's um, like a particular like cramped hallways or anything like that into which you can just get some metal framed sort of self-assembly beds um, for that instance but a lot of the times the divians are going to work just fine again all this stuff you can get flat pack from argus i think for cheaper so i'm i don't normally tend to um use a sublime for that so i'm not going to recommend you do either you can obviously you know have a look at this in your own time 
Um, if you like the look of it, then obviously go and use it. But for the sake of this, I'm not going to do that. Bathroom pack. I'm assuming I'm going to assume one bathroom just to keep it easy. And again, I like using these people because they take all the rubbish away. They're very reliable with their delivery times. Um, and it's, it just makes the process an awful lot easier. So this is everything I would get from Sublime when setting up a property. And you can see it's looking around £2,490. So I'm just going to put in here £2,490. Now the other things we've got is obviously home furnishings. These are going to include things like throws, um, cushions, um, any sort of like lamps, um, yeah, all sorts of things like that. Um, something we haven't got yet, obviously, is all your flat pack stuff. So TV stands, side tables, um, you know, any sort of you know rugs, tellies, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to put in here as a cost of say fourteen hundred pounds for this. And as an interior design work, I'm going to estimate this is going to be around sort of around four fifty. So this is going to be all like you know you're painting your trays and any sort of extra bits. I'd always had a little bit of an extra buffer for the bits because I'd always rather get a property right. Um, and we're looking at around £7,000 to set up this property. Now, if we go into calculations, again, I've based it on £1,200. Um, and then we've got all of our rates in here, which we got from the previous step. And you can see over the course of a year, if we're able to shoot for a 70% markup, or sorry, 70% occupancy, I should say, it's looking at around £8,000. And we're coming in around £7,000. So this is a good target. Something I'd always have as a budget would be estimated annual profit that you will make of a property over a year. And as long as you're under that budget, then you should be looking quite good. That's normally the recommendation I'd have for anyone understanding the setup costs of your business. Now, I hope everyone's found this trial to be very useful. There still is so much more information that um, I need to teach you in order to make your Airbnb business successful. And all this information can be found inside of the academy. Some things I'd really recommend people have are things like a, a trainer, you know, someone that's going to help and guide you through your Airbnb journey. Create a business plan. We have business plan templates inside of the academy. Um, understanding how to talk to agents and landlords and we'll be able to give you uh, agents and landlord scripts. Understanding the difference in how to communicate um, with each one because it's very different talking to an agent than it is a landlord and so much more. Um, we also have um, group calls once a week so that people can understand how other people are succeeding in the market and share information um, with other people. Something that is really important with Airbnb is this market is changing all the time. Uh, it's constantly evolving, it's constantly changing and you have to make sure that you're learning in order to stay ahead of the game. And so that's really what the Airbnb Academy is all about, is making sure that not only these people start their businesses, but they continue to succeed inside of their business. So I look forward to seeing you inside of the Academy.